Good evening and thanks for keeping a date with us on the program Transforming Agriculture in Nigeria. A program sponsored by the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development to showcase Nigeria's agricultural sector and efforts of the ministry to make it a mainstay of the nation's economy. And at the bottom of this aspiration is research. Research and more research. This is because research has the potential to maximize all our potentials in crop and animal production, as well as processing. This week, we shall start a series with focus on the Institute for Agricultural Research, IAR Zaria. In this episode, we are showcasing an overview of the Institute in terms of its historical evolution, mandate, research programs, and scope of operation. But before then, let's take news from the Ministry. Keep watching. In our lineup tonight, Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development gets new minister. NIAS names Nigeria as Africa's largest poultry egg producer. <music> President Muhammad Buhari recently announced a cabinet reshuffle, announcing Muhammad Mahmoud Abubakar, former Minister of Environment, as the new Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development. He takes over from Saba Nunu, who was in August 2019 sworn in as part of the over 40 ministers who make up the current Federal Executive Council. The new Minister of Agriculture, Dr. Muhammad Mahmoud Abubakar, was born on the 30th of December 1958 in Tudumada area of Kaduna State. He obtained his bachelor's degree in biology, major, chemistry, minor, and master's degree in resources management with specialization in natural resources management from Central Washington University, Ellensburg, Washington, a PhD in watersheds management from the University of Arizona, Tucson, all in the USA. Dr. Muhammad Mahmoud was Director of Planning, Research and Evaluation with the Kaduda State Environmental Protection Agency and has lectured at the Water Resources Research Institute, Kaduna. He was a volunteer environmental consultant for the United Nations Association, Seattle, Washington, D.C. He was also a board chairman, Universal Basic Education Board. He is a member of various professional bodies. The Nigerian Institute of Animal Science, NIAS, says Nigeria is the largest poultry egg producer in Africa with an annual production of 650 tons, and that Nigeria's poultry population is 180 million birds, which is the second largest in Africa. The Registrar of the Institute, Professor Eustace Iai, disclosed this recently at a press conference held in Abuja. Eustace noted that Nigeria produced 300 tons of poultry meat yearly, as well as contributing 25% to the agricultural gross domestic product, GDP. To reposition research work in the agricultural sector, the federal government, through Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria, assigned different mandates to agricultural research institutes for optimal performance. The Institute of Agricultural Research has its share of those mandates. In our next segment, Records of the FDA, we'll take a look at the historical evolution, mandate, and research programs of the IAR. Sit back and watch. The Institute for Agricultural Research, IAR, Sam Rosaria, in Kaduna State, was established in 1922 as the research division of the Department of Agriculture for the defunct Northern Nigeria Regional Government. IAR was formally transferred by law to the later established Ahmed Bella University, ABU, on October 14, 1962. With the Federation of the University in 1975, IAR was affiliated in accordance with statute number 14 of the university. From that time, the, through the colonial period, which included 1922 until 1960, most of the efforts of the research programs of the institute were targeted towards fulfilling the knowledge gap concerning the production and the productivity of crops for which the colonial masters were 
having fundamental interest to. Uh, that pattern continued until some time. It was the 1950s when uh, um, indigenous crops such as guinea corn, sorghum, and uh, millet were also included, including rice also, uh, in order to fulfill the staple food requirement of the, the Nigerians also. Uh, alongside the attention to food requirements of Nigerians came also the introduction of other uh, food crops. There was a paradigm shift in the reorganization of the National Agricultural Research Institution in Nigeria in 1987. In this regard, the Institute of Agricultural Research was mandated to conduct research in the area of genetic improvement of its mandate crops. After independence, Nigerians realigned the research focus of IAR to ensure food sufficiency in the country as well as uh, doubling for earning, foreign exchange earning from agriculture. That included both uh, food crops and also the so-called cash crops. The cash crops were largely groundnut, cotton, benicid, and then some vegetables. Uh, the food crops are the popularly known guinea corn, maize, rice, uh, millet, uh, the popular cereals. Then came the post-1985, towards the end of 1980, then the federal government re-examined the research mandates of different research institutes. We have a national mandate for genetic improvement of cow pea, cotton, groundnut, sunflower, maize, sorghum, Jatropha and Artemisia. What I mean by national mandate for genetic improvement is that the institute is directly responsible to ensure that we have improved varieties of these crops that I have mentioned all over the country. For example, maize is grown almost throughout the country. So the fact that the institute is located in Samaru does not mean that we cannot develop maize varieties that will be used in the southern part of Nigeria, for example. Aside the national mandate, the Institute of Agricultural Research is also saddled with a specific mandate in the northwest geographic zone of the country. We are responsible to ensure that we advise, we provide solution to this farming system activities that our farmers are doing. So it's not restricted to only these crops. The national mandate is for genetic improvement. We develop new varieties. We are as the farming system providing solution to all food crop production activities. We are responsible for that in this part of the country, in this zone. To actualize these mandates requires good organizational structure. IAR has a unique organizational structure considering the fact that it is one of the research institutes that is affiliated to a university. You have the Federal Ministry of Agriculture, then you have ARCN under it that is coordinating the activities of all agricultural research institutes in the country. But on the other side, because of our relationship with the university, you also have the University Council, then you have the vice chancellor. So, and in this arrangement, the vice chancellor is the chairman of the board of the institute. So, the board has two membership. We have the internal members and we have the external members. So, the external members are appointed by the federal government, whereas the internal members are also appointed based on their offices in the university and also we have representatives of the senate of the university as internal members sitting in the board of the institute so this is the maybe organizational structure but below that as i said under each office of the principal officer you have other offices the chief executive of the institute is the executive director 
the executive director is supported by four main administrative departments. The assistant director research takes care of all activities that are related technically to research. Then um, the other department is the uh, agricultural extension monitoring and evaluation. Uh, this is uh, headed by another assistant director and uh, the purpose of this department is to design the means and uh, processes of disseminating our research findings. The Institute of Agricultural Research is physically located in the Ahmed Bella University's area and it has a vibrant publication unit, library and academic departments which include Department of Plant Science, Department of Agronomy, Department of Soil Science, Department of Agricultural Economics, Department of Extension and Rural Sociology, and the Department of Crop Protection. Aside the academic departments, the Institute also has nine research programs, namely Cereals Research Program, Legumes and Oil Seed Research Program, Artemisia Research Program, Cotton Research Program, Biotechnology Research Program, Agricultural Mechanization Research Program, Irrigation Research Program, Product Development Research Program, and the Farming Systems Research Program. The Cereals Research Program is charged with the mandate to research into the genetic improvement of cereals crops like maize, sorghum, among others. And if you now say research, what is research? We have been doing a lot of things, or we do a lot of things, developing varieties with different qualities, solving one problem or another for the different uh, agroecological zones of the country. We also have to research into the management of such different crops or varieties and hybrids developed. Some of them we incorporate the high yielding ability, some resistant to some biotic and abiotic problems. And when we say biotic, we mean problems caused by living things, insect pests, pathogens like fungi, viruses, weeds, these are the biotic. Then abiotic will mean the non-living problem causes. Like we have the droughts. Similarly, the legumes and oil seed research program also researches into different varieties of leguminous crops and oil seed like jatropha in terms of environmental requirements for such crops to thrive. Post harvest technology, social economics of production, and cultural management practices. Legumes and oil seeds research program at IR is uh, focused on five main crops, uh, meaning we have uh, granules, cowpea, sunflower, castor, and jatropha. Uh, the program is responsible for genetic and agronomic improvement of these five crops and also work to develop technologies and proving uh, ways to disseminate to, to our stakeholders, which are basically our farmers and consumers. Atanasia is a large diverse genus plant, which is used by pharmaceutical companies for the production of malaria drug, which is recommended by the World Health Organization. The Institute of Agricultural Research has a program that is mandated to identify constraints in the production of technologies of this plant in Nigeria. So the mandate of the program is to conduct research on variety improvement and also research into the farming systems as it relates to crop related practices and also to coordinate the value chain development in this crop to, to help us fight the scourge of malaria. One of the cash crops that is popular in the northern Nigeria is cotton. The Institute of Agricultural Research is also holding sway in its research into cotton. The mandate is uh, very clear cut. 
the, the, the genetic improvement and development of cutting with adequate resistance to pests and diseases with the necessary fiber properties that are required by the cotton industry for this nation. Biotechnology is any technique that uses living things or any substance from living things to make or modify a product. It is also the manipulation of genes, living cells and tissue in a confined environment like laboratory. Biotechnology Research Program of IAR was established in 2010. Actually, the program is settled with the responsibility of conducting basic and applied research in agriculture using biotechnology tools uh, aimed at uh, exploiting the potentials of biotechnology in improving productivity, crop health, and product development of our mandate crops specifically and Nigeria agriculture in general. Biotechnology Research Program of IAR has well-equipped laboratories, micropropagation of multiple number of diseases, free planting material on cowpea, ginger seedlings, atomisia, pineapple, banana, groundnut, among others. While some programs of the Institute of Agriculture Research are mandated to research into genetic improvement of its mandate crops, other programs are targeted to ease production of the mandate crops and for value addition. It also makes effort for an all-year-round production as well as teaching farmers the technologies and the modern agricultural practices. Let us have some more insight into these programs in our next segment, Partnership for Development. The focus of the federal government is to completely reposition the agricultural sector and restore the lost glory of the sector and make it the mainstay of the nation's economy. Mechanization is one of the sure bets to repositioning the agricultural sector. The Institute of Agricultural Research also has a mechanization research program to make agriculture easier for farmers through technology. One is to undertake researches into methodologies that will enhance agricultural production through mechanization. And uh, the second one is to develop some prototypes that will be used in achieving those aims and also evaluate the prototypes. The target of the federal government in agriculture is to ensure food sufficiency for local consumption and export. This can only be possible if crops are produced all year round. The Institute of Agricultural Research also has a program that researches into irrigation system in Nigeria. We have the national mandate for research and development in irrigation in, in the country. That means we have the capacity, we have the opportunity to, 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 to make research on the irrigation for various crops. And uh, basically, the programs is making research on water resources, development, and management. That's number one. And also, it's making research on cropping system and crops, in, in, of irrigated crops in Nigeria and also is making research on the protection of the environment. IAR also has product research program to strategically conduct research on possible products that can be produced out of the mandate crops for value addition. The mandate of the program is to evaluate the nutritive value of uh, the institute uh, mandate crops and also to look at the suitability of uh, using these mandate crops for both household and also for industrial processing and also to monitor the level of toxic compounds or material that may be found in some of these uh, mandate crops. 
For all of these efforts to be fruitful, the research findings must be communicated to the farmers. IAR also has a research program that is dedicated to interact with farmers and teach them more than agricultural practices. The mandate of the Farming Systems Research Program in this institute is actually to serve as a main link between the research the researchers and the research outputs of the institute and the end users of those research outputs, which are mainly the farmers, the industries, the non-governmental organization, other governmental organization and other collaborating partners. So this program has that mandate of developing appropriate uh, technologies. These technologies are usually geared towards ones um, a constraint in identified in farming communities or by farmers around the IR mandate um, areas, though not limited to other parts of the country or agroecologies, then we do a kind of um, analysis. Then we analyze the system at the same time, develop appropriate technologies and see how we disseminate these technologies for farmers to, to adapt. A lot of research findings of the Institute of Agricultural Research have over the years been taken to the farmers and have brought about a turnaround in crop production. In our next segment, Farmers Speak, let's hear testimonies of farmers on how IAR reached out to them and the impact on their farming systems and productions. The IAR uh, Institute have reached us since 2012. Since then, they have been bringing very good uh, issues about farming system to us. Like coming here every year or annually to advise us on how we are going to engage in farming system that we can benefit very well, especially in soya beans farming. Uh, beans, maize, uh, guinea corn, and rest. And there are so many technologies or uh, 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 training they, uh, they have been given to our both male and female. Some time they used to be here, and sometimes they used to invite us to their, you know, uh, 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 institutions. Cassava, also known as Manihot esculenta, is a perennial woody shrub with an edible root which grows in tropical and subtropical areas of the world. Cassava originated from tropical America and was first introduced into Africa in the Congo Basin by the Portuguese around 1558. Today, cassava supports the livelihood of over 300 million Africans. It is rich in carbohydrates, calcium, vitamins B and C, and other essential minerals. In Sub-Saharan Africa, cassava is mainly a subsistence crop grown for food by small-scale farmers who sell the surplus. Its roots can be harvested between six months and three years after planting. Apart from food, cassava is very versatile and its derivatives and starch are applicable in many types of products such as foods, confectionery, sweeteners, glues, plywood, textiles, paper, biodegradable products, monosodium, glutamate and drugs. Cassava chips and pellets are used in animal feed and alcohol production. It is produced in countries like Nigeria, Mozambique, Brazil, Thailand, Indonesia, among others. More than 291 million tons of cassava was produced worldwide in 2017, of which Africa accounted for over 60%. In 2017, Nigeria produced 59 million tons, making it the world's largest producer, approximately 20% of global production with a 37% increase in the last decade. Nigeria exports about 3.2 million tons annually and earned a record of $136 million in 2013. The Democratic Republic of Congo is the largest consumer of cassava in sub-Saharan Africa, followed by Nigeria. And that's it on our program for this week. 
Transforming Agriculture in Nigeria will come your way next week, same time, same station, to unfold the findings of those research programs of the Institute of Agricultural Research. Do follow us on all our social media handles showing on your screen. Stay safe and enjoy the rest of your day.